Sure can. We're ready. All right. Um, 12 o'clock on Wednesday, November 16th. I'd like to call the utility committee meeting to order. Um, I, can we have the roll before the pledge? Kathy. Hicken. Here. Walter. Here. Fox. Here. And uh, could everybody now stand? Pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I guess I did that backwards. Oh, well. Oh, well. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out on a on an afternoon uh seems to to work so i'm happy about that uh, our first item on the agenda today is the scotland ridge water option i know i've discussed this a little bit with nathan i don't know who's got the lead on this i think it should is it it'd be nathan yeah, that's what i thought thank you wanted to give you an update um regarding scotland ridge we facilitated a meeting last two fridays ago mm-hmm. Uh, to meet with the developer up there, uh, Representative Homewood Homes, Jim Lipnos, and the district to get everybody together on how these folks can get water. They would, of course, like to start building first of the year, if not earlier, if they could, uh, until this uh, matter of the water is resolved. So we got everybody together and kind of developed an agreeable idea that we would present to our elected bodies for the final stamp of approval. Uh, a little bit of background um, as it relates to the existing contract and the, the uh, definition of service areas. This is clearly uh, within the district's service area to serve and provide water. Uh, however, this is like a similar situation where they want to serve it, but they do not have water and we are there. So uh, sometimes logic does not always trump in this situation. but. We discussed several options at the meeting. Uh, I'll share with you the final and acceptable option that we all came to agreement with to be vetted with our um, I guess legislative bodies. But we looked at everything possible to say, hey, the city take it. They're not interested in that, of course. Um, or we master meter them and charge them our out-of-town rate, and they pay for the tap fee and everything else. They're not interested in that because that takes it out of the scale of economics where they cannot really provide water at an affordable rate to these folks. Option three is what we come up with, and I think it provides a little well, give let, and let me, let me Let me interrupt you so I don't forget this. Aren't their tap fees lar- higher than ours and in their there, water? Not there because we're out of town. Out of town. Okay. So our out of town rate up there is going to be in the seven, uh, I'll tell you real quick, $7,088 range. So okay. we're very similar when it comes to that. Their rate and our out-of-town rate are pretty close to each other. Right. So, but one of them was to make this work, we would have to treat it as a six-inch tap fee so they could provide mm-hmm. the fire okay. flow in there. So at that rate, out of town, well, you're kind of off the scale. At minimum, it's going to be at least a $400,000 tap fee, mm-hmm. which they can't recoup that back on maybe the 90 homes that may go in there and then let alone the user rates that they're not going, it would just be an exchange. So it doesn't make sense. So the option that we came up with, at least the best for those of us in the room, throw it to you guys for you guys to ultimately make the decision is, um, of course, there's there's some give on our end. Uh, one of the options is, and, I, and I'll show you on a map, uh, to the district's plans are to well, ultimately, and depends on how things go, they are determined to take a water line down to Bannon and Deep Hill. Up York, over Hollow, yep. down 310. All the way down 310. So before I get to that, one of the things that we talked about and I threw out said, listen, and this is just my perception, if these two entities both have a water main on 310, people are paying for this twice, is my thought. Now, whether or not it's our customers or theirs, somebody's paying for this water line twice. You know what I mean? And, and it, in my opinion, makes us look like fools running two water mains down 310. So we kind of stopped there and said, okay, so here's the option. We have water there at Scotland Ridge, and here's the idea that I threw out. If you're hell-bent on getting that, then this is what we'll do. We can set up, and, and this is where Jamie would – come into play if we could do this or how it would work out. Let's say Homewood wants to start building. 
we will be the water provider until a certain date that they actually bring the water line down. So with the idea saying, hey, this is what we do. If they want to build a home next month, we'll take that tap fee and just, just an idea. We're going to take that tap fee. It's going to run through us. We're going to keep uh, two-thirds of it, and we're going to send them a third immediately, okay? Send them a third of that fee, and we're just going to kind of keep the seat warm until they're ready, okay? The idea then would be if we give them a deadline and let's say, you know, 1231 of 2018, you've got to have your water line down here to assume this whole subdivision. If you don't, we keep the remaining two thirds. If you do come down, like in an escrow account, we'll give you the, the remaining, your, eventually they'll get two thirds if they come down and we're gonna keep a third as like a middleman fee while we're there because they want it and again, if this goes the way that they would like, we would have our section in Scotland Ridge and then they would bring their line down. We would have two utility providers in Scotland Ridge. The idea was presented to say, hey, you bring this water line down 310, a part of this agreement would be you would take this whole entire subdivision over and we would get out of that one. And then maybe even get out of Highland because there's some options of developing down there. If they're gonna push down, we have an option of kind of coming up with an agreement that will work for them. And, and really, in some aspects, instead of us stretching ourselves clear across Harrison Township, we kind of can recoil back after some time. So they seem somewhat agreeable to the idea that basically we would charge the water, we would treat them as our customers until a determined time frame when they have to take over. If they don't take over or have their water line there, we develop this contract as such to say, hey, if you're not here by this deadline, it's all ours discussion off the table. That way it kind of puts them in a position instead of the other circumstance. You have to get here. You have an onus to get there at a certain point or it's ours and it goes away and we're not gonna have this conversation again type thing. It's favorable for the developer. It's one of those that if they wanna move, they gotta get this water situation resolved they're kind of in the um, gray space between what we want and what the district may want. The reality is the district does not have a water line there yet, but they're not willing to concede that it becomes our customer at this time. So I thought just by being fair, being reasonable or whatever, however you would determine that to be to say, hey, you want this, we'll keep it warm for you until such date. We're not gonna totally do it for free. We need to make something off of it if we can. <coughs> Well, I, I guess my first question would be, <clears throat> the, for, and I'm not, I'm still, I'm still digesting what you said, but the third of the tap fee at the out of town rate, which is almost there, which is almost Southwest Licking's rate anyway, um, does that more than cover our costs? Um, I don't want the city to end up being short. It's, it's going to be close to our in town rate. Uh, give me a second. I mean the ta I mean the tap, the what, the the under your under the the first part of this plan, there's a there's a, a third that comes to us and a third goes to them. As well, two thirds go to the, just the well. Idea. Uh, actually, under your plan, a third goes to us, a third goes to them, and a third goes to escrow. If, for lack of a better term, I don't know what the term would be. I don't. Right. That's exactly what it would be. It would be called an escrow. Okay, and then if they make it there, they get all the, uh, the they get the second third. <clears throat> is the first third, does it cover our infrastructure well, um, costs? I, the, the idea of throwing out the third in my mind was one, if this developer builds these lines in there, we're not going to have any cost to it. And there's going to be a maintenance bond, whether it's a year, if something goes wrong, that bond's going to have to pick up those repairs. Let's say it takes the district two years. Let's say into the second year, <clears throat> In case something does happen, a hydrant blow off or a service line, we've at least got some funds set aside. This was part of the discussion. If something goes sideways, we're going to tap into that to fix it while we're waiting on you to come to move water. So it's not like we're going to uh, you know, make money or recoup any cost that we may have in the <coughs> initial design or build because it's not on our dime. But it would provide us some revenue if something did happen in the form of maintenance. Or if we wanted to do something different, we could draft up an agreement to say, even though it's our water, and if a main blows up a year into this, while it's still ours, maybe the district, you come fix it type of thing. There's scenarios that can be worked out. It's just an idea. 
how how you split it, how you make it work. Uh, I'll start with Mr. King. And just one point I wanted to clarify with the you know if we're talking about our our maintenance costs in there, our maintenance is paid out of user fees, correct? Yeah. And not for the most tap part. fees. So yeah. yeah. And yeah. we would collect the user fees yeah. on this while we were servicing it. And my question went much more. Let's uh, not knowing what it takes. Okay. Maybe we will, we have to put in I don't know, 700 feet of pipe and or something along the I, I mean, I, so does the third that we're getting that we're keeping no matter what, does that, <coughs> is, is it more than cover that? Um, I don't see a scenario where we would have to throw in another 700 feet on our cost to make this work. I guess. They, okay. No, that's okay. I, I'm just, uh, yeah. it's, it's just talking about it's, in general. I'm yeah. talking a general infrastructure question. First of all, fiscally, does, before I get to the other stuff that I'm chewing on, yeah. to, fiscally, I want to make sure that we don't say, yeah, we'll take a third. And then it turns out the city takes a hit because a third of the tap fees was five hundred thousand dollars, and the city ended up paying seven hundred thousand dollars. I, I see what you're Mr. Mr. Walter, a um, couple uh, I, uh, questions on this. Initial questions: Who? I mean, this might be details that you guys haven't gotten to yet. But uh, who's the development agreement with? Is it with the city of, of Pataskos or with the district? As far development as agreement, the- as far as. This, um, you know, what they're going to, you know, as far as the uh, infrastructure bonding, bonding, mm. who's that going to be enabled to? I haven't got to that point because we talked about if we build it or if this goes on, whose specs are we going to follow? The That's that, I'm the getting system. to that one. Whose specs are they yeah. following? So we, we haven't cleared that up other than the first steps to say, is this something we could work on? And I think that would come out in the. Who's, whose meters are they? Exactly. We had talked about that. Yeah. If. if it goes this way. Should it be there? Because we're pits. They're not pits. So there's some of these things exactly. that need to be worked out. Uh, and then to Tim's question, there you don't feel there's any offsite improvements. Let's say let's say the district doesn't show up, mm. and we have to service this from now until forever. Mm. Um, is there any infrastructure improvements that have to be made to service this to service this subdivision, as well as any improvements that have to be made to Highlands? I mean, as we're getting into this, this is the northern the northern section that we said we don't really want. Right. Absolutely. Long term, this plays into the booster station upgrade. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yes, by saying that, if we serve this for ten years, we damn well better upgrade the booster station. Well, as I understood it, it cuts off at, at 2018. They don't get a choice. It's now ours. Correct. They don't get to come in and say, yeah, we if, now want it. If everybody, of course, was agreeable to that, to say either the cost of them coming down, fine, city, it's yours, and we've really been nice and gave them a third. A, yeah. Of, of all the tap fees. Just to say, you know, because if you remember, they wanted, oh, we'll pay us X amount of dollars for yeah. service, but we don't do that. But at least this is something to say. I, Let me ask another kind of another global yep. question. Uh, as we're trying to still work through this Fannin issue yeah, yeah. and Eagle, does it make sense? I mean, this seems to be kind of our ace to, 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 to at least hold on to. Yeah. I mean, we've got a, we've got a, a developer that needs it now. It's not a developer that has said they've got people interested and there's no plan, there's no right. final, you know, any infrastructure. But this is somebody who needs it now. What what would be your reasoning behind making this agreement or wanting to do something like this other than it facilitates Homewood um, without, you know, at least discussing and, and resolving Fannin and Deagle? Agreed. Um, my, my thought, and this is – however wrong, skewed, or whatever, this was my mindset. And just this is how our meeting kind of went a little bit. Um, Given the history of the two entities and how much we've paid attorneys over the past couple years, my thought was, hey, let us get together, see if we can come up with an idea on this, and to see if we can get a little success under our belt (coughs) that might propel us into how we're going to deal with Fannin and Deagle. That was my thought. Let's deal with this small little wedge right now to say, how can we get this moving now and may or may not set precedence for the next? Because there's a couple other ideas that are in the works that need to be discussed how we resolve well, them. And, and the, reason, the reason why I bring that up is because if, if we were to be have this forever yeah. and we have to make a booster station in, improvement, we sure as heck want to have Fannin and Deagle at that point Absolutely. to Absolutely. help offset the cost of the booster station. Great. So I, I don't see how you don't do both these at the same time 
and say it's an all or nothing well, to the district work out a deal i mean make yeah. I, i'm not saying be unfair to them right, at all right right i'm saying make it so that if we're going to if we're going to incur costs for a booster station yeah. we certainly want oh sure all of this uh, we have to have i it. i would agree with that otherwise we don't want it at all i agree i agree okay yeah i'm just i just thought i'd mention that i just i think we're giving up i, I understand your point nathan and, yeah. and understand why you want to uh, this is a good, you know, olive branch yeah. reaching across the aisle, you know, working with everybody. But at the same time, um, we, we're going to be looking at some serious costs if they don't service this area. Correct. Absolutely. So, yeah, okay. it's, it's, it's unique. I and I think, mind. too, with the, the time frame idea, and let's say, you know, 2017, it's in the budget to look at redoing the booster station, upgrading that. Um, if we're lucky, um, you know, final design complete halfway through the year, and maybe a construction schedule that may bridge 17 into 18. <coughs> With that being said, I think that's why we're, you know, definitive on a timeline to say, you got to get here at this point, or we're moving forward without you. And maybe that is a shorter time frame to say, you've got a year. I, I, I don't know. It's one of those to kind of push and say, if you really want it, we're willing to help. Uh, to at least facilitate so we're at least viewed as development i'm just i'm just i guess i'm back to the idea of if i certainly don't want to 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 put out something that says we'll take it right at the end of the day we'll take it right. and be strapped with a booster station upgrade that we aren't that we don't have another 246 homes i think it is when van and deagle yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. that's going to help Agreed. offset that cost mr <clears throat> mr fox hasn't had a chance yet, well so you guys know. asked some good questions already but you know, one of, one of the things I want to hit on is that uh, for the sewer and water district to spend $4 million to expend, extend a water line up there uh, hurts our residents. So that, that puts us right in the mix because that's affecting our residents because our residents are part of the sewer and water district. <coughs> and, uh, you know, that, that seems almost ridiculous. Uh, everybody here knows what we've offered them to do that. They know that we have water line sitting there. We offered them $1.2 million for doing nothing to help them out. Um, so that, that being said, that, that uh, is a concern for me. This, on the other hand, open, starts opening up some dialogue between the two of us. That, you know, and, and I think what we have to convince... Um, the city and water district as well as the city is that what's good for them is good for us and vice versa because we have a lot of residents in the city that are affected by their decisions um, that being said to get the two entities working hard together on these deals you know uh, Beachwood Trails issues uh, other issues with Bannon and Deagle this issue uh, for us to work together would just be the icing on top of all of it, uh, which ultimately could come up to an agreement somewhere in the future that would say that, um, you know, the agreement between the city and the sewer and water district is whatever's best for the cities, for the city or the entities, you know, whatever is the best for, residents. for the residents. You know, uh, we try to put that back in in 2004. We pushed it hard. I pushed it hard. I don't think we ever really got it in as tight as it needed to be, obviously. But that's what needs to happen. We need to get both these entities together. And, and that sounds like a good step towards it, to you know sit down and discuss it and negotiate it and, and see how we can make these two groups come together. And the best thing in the world would probably be for them not to spend $4 million. And which, in that case, then it would beg to answer that, you know, what is the alternative and how much is that going to cost? And do we figure that in in the onset right now that, you know, they may not, they may not get the votes on the board to go forward and put $4 million into that. Uh, you know, right now they've only got two members on the board until another appointment gets made. So, you know, that, that could make or break all of that. So I, my, my only condition would be that as we do it, we sharpen the numbers to make sure that we're, we're there with the, the booster station 
that it's it, it, we already understand how we're going to do it. We act as if they're not coming in at 2018 with with the water line, and that that way it covers us. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that that we're covered, and it certainly doesn't hurt them if they don't spend that money and they go a different direction or do whatever they have to do. So I I think it's a good positive move uh, to start working. I don't, to work. I, the only other thing I would say is, <clears throat> and it kind of ties in with Andy's comments, is <clears throat> I would not, and I'm not accusing anybody of anything, I would not want to get into a situation where every place, every place this pops up, the district says, oh, well, let's do the one-third, one-third, one-third thing, because essentially what we're doing is we're giving them a third of every tap fee right. for them to never strive to reach there and essentially doing the opposite of what I think Nathan and BJ's vision for where we want to go in the utility committee so far, what our feeling and council's feeling, I think, is that we don't we don't have any great desire to go screaming up north to expand an empire of water into wherever. Um, so I wouldn't want this to be the um, – to become the norm, I guess, would be – I don't know how you feel about that. Well, but. No, I, I'm completely 100% on board because it, this is just trying to, well, I won't lie, part of a negotiation is trying to figure out what each side is willing to give up. So I thought by doing the gentleman thing, say, hey, what if we did this? If you guys are hell-bent on getting here, one, and we, it, it, they're good folks, but we had to draw it out of them how far down you want to go through then. You know, at least tell us how far. We only hear about it. Tell us. And, and we drew it out of them and said, okay, you're willing to take it down Creek then. Okay. At least we know. You know that we don't want to go north or we can't. And here's the thing at play. We've got two entities, one that basically wants to, you know, well, they're playing a game of risk, the board game. They want to conquer the northern parts, the, the uh, unincorporated areas of the township and area. Okay. We logistically can only extend past our current service area is only so much because of this contract. Now, without getting into another detail, Harrison Township, Beachwood Trails, we've got water all over the place out there. And I always argue, say, hey, right here at the, the um, where our water towers are, Beachwood Trails, House Lab, big farm field there that eventually could turn into houses. Five years from now, they start developing that. Who's going to expect that they get the water to it? We'll be back in the exact same situation. Well, same yes. exact situation. So we right. have to fundamentally fix, I think, in my mind, what is our mission, what is our goal? And I think there's also something at play, and I think Mike, Mike hit on it, about what is best for the residents? What is best for the people that call Patasco a home? And I think a part of this situation dovetails into another option on how we – Maybe solve some problems of ours, and the district solve some of their problems. Well, we've talked about well, that. What, yeah. what we would have to do for upgrades if we didn't uh, have that area right. to service. Right. And and that's kind that, of that's one point four million dollars worth of work. Right. Well, and and it's one of the. You're exactly right. So looking at that on paper, said, so, well, boy, this is a no-brainer, right? So part of it is, I think, really, what I'm trying to do is one, and, and we even mentioned it in the meeting. Maybe again keeping the attorneys out of it until it's time to draw up some contract paperwork. Get our nuts and bolts folks together and our legislative folks, a handful, however you can work it out, and just sit down at the table and say, do we like this, love this, hate it? Can we move forward with this knowing we have also this function? Because a part of this, any anything, any, any, any inner working that we get corrected or in agreement with this has to correlate with the negotiating of this current contract to say, all right, so if we're willing to do this, then how do we handle the rest of this for the next 10 years? Well, that, I think that's really the heart of... And, and that really begins to bleed us into, into the next item. I don't know, but I want to tie this up before we finish. And I, I, I think at this point, what this discussion item on the agenda is asking is, utility committee-wise, do we think, as a utility committee, that having the administration move forward with a discussion along these lines, realizing that there are no promises, that there are no, um, does the committee feel okay with that? And then ultimately, uh, my next question is, would we want council to also 
make that decision or is that a decision that the utility committee can make and and brief council on and that's good enough so i i would think that uh you know we can make a recommendation to council council has to make the decision so it's plain and simple do, so, so could uh, i guess but my question to the to the three elected officials here are is do we feel comfortable making that recommendation to is there a motion that to that's to do, that. I'm sorry, Nathan. Well, can, can I say like, is it too early? Make, well, make a recommendation based on maybe an administrative summary, because really, I other than emails, I'm I'm summarizing to you um, our discussions and some emails. It, you know, pending that I give you something, hey, here's something in writing that we're thinking to present, yay or nay. Could could we do that too? Like, I, I don't know how you would do it pending um, an exhibit so you guys know exactly what we're talking about and what the district folks says <clears throat> yeah i think we could work something out with this i i think for that to happen i'd have to see the exhibit yeah, there's some details I, that i think that are outstanding yes. that i think are important yes um and then i'd add i'd still add in there i i have a strong feeling that this should dovetail with fanning i don't see why we separate right. the two that's just that. my opinion I think if they're willing to talk about this one, they're willing to talk about Fannin in the same light. Right. And if we're willing to have this type of arrangement yeah. with this side, yeah. why aren't we willing to do that with Fannin well, also? And, and I'll tell you that our conversation Sorry. regarding this went into Fannin and Beagle with some ideas to discuss us and them. And I think they were also agreeable to some of these concepts too. Can I ask who <laughs> us is when they were talking about them? Us, us I understand, but Who's the other? Um, who are the who Lee, else? their right. manager, um, his right hand man, CJ. Yeah. And that was it. That was it. No and board members. BJ there were no board I. members. This yeah. was no, this was okay. just at an administrative and, level. And I, I think what we, we should do mm -hmm. is that we should put it in, in the administration's court under the understanding that, you know, anything the administration does has to ultimately be approved by council anyway, yeah. which would ultimately come to us first as a utility committee uh, for recommendation and then it would go go to to them and and you know we've got to trust the the people that we have in here to to work and i think that bj knows and i think that uh, nate knows what our thoughts are because they hear our thoughts here and and let them do the best that they could do and then you know we'll we'll accept it or we'll switch it a little or whatever but I think I think what I'd like to see is that I'd like to see these two entities working together for the betterment of the community, and that's that's what's important. I mean, I understand we can't lose money because we can't because that then that hurts our section of the community that's under our district, and I understand that they really shouldn't be losing any money. So it's going to be a real fine line that's going to you know. But I I think. With the amount of money they're talking about spending in that, that there's a there's a real win-win for the residents and the community out of this whole discussion, and I, that's you know that's what I would say to Nate and and BJ is you know well, you go forward, that's what I think we all need to see, and and the rest of council can put their two cents worth in on it when an agreement ultimately comes up on it. Yep, I mean I I think that's well said. I don't think there since the very beginning of the early discussions about. The contract and the arbitration and Fannin and Deagle and everything else, Mike, I don't think could, could uh, I could not have said it better. The idea for us to work with a neighboring provider that actually not as just is neighboring physically, but providing water to other people in our city for the two entities to work together is all has always been in my eyes, the goal. So Mr. King had his hand up. I Just a couple comments I wanted to make. And um, Mike actually hit on what I was going to say is that I think, you know, our purpose of putting this on the agenda and talking about this was to bring it up with you guys and get the initial reaction. If you guys would have said, yeah, this is not a good idea, guys. But we wanted to see if, if, if there was any putting the brakes on this or not. I think that we've made some good strides with this. The other thing, I, the way I view this is what's being proposed with – the sharing is, in essence, what we've talked about doing with Fannin and Deagle when we said, hey, why don't we give you guys X number of dollars? We'll service it. The only difference is, is putting a timeline on 
for them to have the opportunity to come and service. I mean, we're doing pretty much well, the same one difference. thing we The did. other difference is Fannin and Deagle will absolutely, by by annexation agreement, pay the in-city the yes. in city rate, and that may complicate it, but, but not so much. I mean, I couldn't agree with Andy Moore and Mike that ultimately one, hopefully, hopefully a progression of discussion and positive discussion leads to a solution and then overall, and that almost, so I think, I think we're clear on, 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 on that now, uh, that almost just automatically segues into the contract review with the district, mm -hmm. which is the next agenda item. Um, and that is, I, in, in looking at the discussion we just had with Scotland Ridge, I was wondering if the utility committee might be uh, open to uh, asking the administration to contact the district and begin the talks towards revisiting what's in the contract. The a large portion of the arbitrator's decision essentially gutted the contract. And so the contract is kind of this empty shell that's sitting out there. If stuff progresses with Scotland Ridge, should is it not also time to look at revisiting what how the contract reads? And so that's why the next item is on the agenda. And 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 my opinion on that is that you probably need to see how it progresses and include it as part and parcel. Uh, you know, the agreement that we have with them should be the agreement that uh, addresses some of these issues, and that, I think, can address it in the future. So I, I think that, yeah, we do, but at the same time, let's see what's happening with, with these things, because it seems like there's a pretty good discussion going on right now, a pretty positive discussion, uh, even if it's not with the council and the board members, it is, it is with the administrations of both district and the city and and that right there is a positive part first and if if we can get a good working relationship going with them on these things then then it should make uh the agreement ultimately in the end once everybody realizes that what the important part of it all is is what we're, that we're doing right by the citizens yep and and i think that 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 puts it out there that you're doing a good job it's working let's go forward but i i, I know we need to make that agreement I mean that needs to happen soon. But, you know, within the next four or five months, we better we better have that finalized. With Scotland, you're saying? No, I'm oh, with the, the contract. whole thing. You oh know, yeah. If Scotland goes good, and and then maybe that'll pull in some other things such as uh, Beachwood Trail, such as uh, Fannie and Deagle. You know, uh, that that'll that's a big part right there, and a positive uh, working relationship between the city uh, and the and the district. Solving some of those issues will make creating a contract a whole lot bigger, a whole lot easier. Andy, I, yeah, I'm I'm fine with working on the contract. Um, you know, I kind of, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be the one that says we need to take a temperature here of what, of um, you know, with Scotland and Fannin and Deagle. I don't think I think Scotland's pretty easy for them to agree to, and say sure, 90, 90 homes. We were ready to you know throw that in to the deal anyhow. I mean, when you when you do the math, it's it's two hundred and ten thousand dollars to them as their one third, so it's really not, you know, a big dollar figure for them. Um, that's why I want to that's why I want to try to keep these two together and make them and let's get both resolved. And if there's a good working relationship on both of those, yeah, let's go forward with the contract. I and rewrite the contract. My feeling is that the the contract discussions. Is what pulls Fannin and Deagle and ties it to Scotland Ridge. Agreed. That's that's what my feeling was. Not not well, Mike, Scotland, not tying Fannin and Deagle to Scotland so much as the rolling of, of the contract. So let and me the, ask this question. So we have a reason. We have a good reason to resolve Scotland Ridge right now. Really good reason. Um, we have a we have a um, a, a very uh, vocal developer in Fannin and Deagle. So we have a somewhat good reason. At this point, we have a reason to resolve it, and we have a reason not to. We have a con we have a med mediation that says don't you can't really do much. What's the what's the reason to resolve? What what's anybody's push on either side to resolve the contract? Well, I, right, that's what I'm getting. That's what I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to say, Tim. Was that that's why I want to see 
if we get these two resolved, then there's a pretty good reason to resolve the contract because we have a good working relationship with two issues that have been one issue that has been very difficult. Get that resolved. Now there's there's a good there's a trust, there's a there's a dialogue, and that contract can get resolved. I think I think if you throw if you resolve Scotland Ridge, let's say say hypothetically resolve Scotland Ridge in this in this fashion, then you try to do the contract. You may come across some, you know, I don't know, some difficulties that nobody's going to resolve, and that's going to leave Fannie and Deagle out on the out on their island yet again. I, I just that's what I'm trying to. We've got a reason. I think Nate's come up with a pretty darn you know pretty good way of resolving Scotland Ridge. Let's see if we can get Fannie and Deagle resolved with both of those out of the way. Then there's some real positive things that can happen for the district, such as Beachwood Trails, and. We've got some good negotiation that can can happen with the contract. That, that's the way I look at it. You don't have to agree with me. That's just the way I see it. Yeah. Um, okay, so that, that's my viewpoint on it. Mr. King, you had your hand up. Um, I, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. I, just, just to share a little bit of my thought as it relates to the contract. Um, the contract as it stands now, in my opinion, was, well, um, driving force was the interconnect and the use of Absolutely. Castle as a flow through to do their business up north. That's off the table now. What I really think, and, and I don't want to get caught in the weeds of, let's figure out a contract so we have every answer resolved, because that's what they tried to do with this other contract, to say, oh, this will fix everything for the next 20 years, and it doesn't. I think really we need to take a basic step back and say, all right, one, if, if they're, well, one thing that the contract has done well for the most part is defining service territories. I think that needs to be function number one of any contract to say, moving forward, whenever we agree to say, we, us, will not encroach past whatever mark. So then that way they can go about all their plans without worrying about what we're gonna fight them on or vice versa, you know what I'm saying? To at least establish here's the boundaries and really with the caveat knowing with them going north, we are now surrounded. So our growth options are limited outside of where we're at now. So we can focus kind of internally a little bit or actually parts of the service area that are practical for us to serve. And that would be one in the contract, the blue, the shaded blue. If you look at that contract, it's one over by the job ready site. And that is what they would call shared service area. And one of the, the, uh, the, the procedures of determining that is to basically take a common sense approach and logical view to say, if a third-party engineer came in, who is best served to provide water or sewer to this site? And that's how I think a majority of some of these issues could be resolved. Mm -hmm. And it, I agree. <clears throat> Mike, hey, did you, I saw your hand up, I thought. No, that, no that's what I was okay. – I agree with that. I don't have anything. Okay. <coughs> is that so sufficiently uh, hashed out for everybody? Does everybody feel comfortable with where we are on that? Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the utility rate review slash capacity fees. Uh, we're required every year to re to uh, evaluate uh, what our current utility rates are, and uh, this would be the meeting where the utility committee takes a look at that and makes recommendations or has discussion about raising, lowering, whatever. So I'll throw that one open to you, Nate. Good. And, and with that being said, the way the ordinance was written, is to make sure that we're getting together to talk about it and say, is it doing what we expected it to do? If not, are there adjustments that need to be made? For the most part, our, with, with the adjustment of the water capital fee last year, the budget in my mind is doing what we expected it to do as far as paying debt service and operating costs. Now, of course, there are wants and needs, uh, needs, uh, one of those things that we talked about is growth with the booster station. We're looking at a $425,000 project on the books for 17 if we can pull that off. Uh, one of the things to look at, I would recommend, at least in my mind, until we get some clarity on what we're doing with the, the contract and the district, I say we wait to really tune in on what we want to do with the rates until after we find what the agreement will be, what the future will be. By that saying, do we have to do this upgrade to the booster station now? Okay, if so, how do we 
ensure that the investment is being paid for by the people that want to tap onto the investment. And or if there's another scenario to where um, maybe we don't have to do an upgrade to the extent that we thought we did based on maybe changes of service areas and things like that. So I would be hesitant to say, you know, to report and say, hey, this is perfect for the next two years at this point. I can't tell you that because we still have some things in place. So in my mind, the rate thing, the rate review or what we do with the rates kind of coincides with what we're going to do long term with the district in our district. Andy. Well, and I, I think this has been brought up several times with the budget and uh, with several uh, discussion points within the budget about, hey, we're, we're heading towards the red and we are, we need to, you know, and I think it's rightfully stated that we need to look at these and say what, either we've got to stop spending money or we've got to increase the rates because the two don't, no. don't converge. Um are you saying, would you say that, and, and I think we talked about this a little bit, Nate, about uh, during the budget review, the uh, booster upgrade station, you know, is the useful life of the booster that's there now, is it still useful, A, you know, does it have life to it? It's not needing to be replaced today with a similar size booster. So it's life, is, there's still life in it. Um, and the only reason why we're doing this upgrade is to increase our, our pressures and, and, our, and our ability to service north. So would it be prudent if, if we were going to look at the rates as they are today without those fees, without those expenses, would it be prudent to say, well, let's design it and hold to, to install, and maybe it's a 2018 project once, or end of 17, beginning of 18, once this is all decided about Scotland Ridge and Fannin. Absolutely. So that, to me, seems to make sense, and I think, the, I think we can have a very dis a good discussion of the rates at that point, because we know we're spending X, we know we're going to have these other expenses, and we got to we've got to get either more people to pay, yeah, yeah. or we got to increase the rates on the people who are paying. Um, okay, I'm, I'm good with that. And what I would hate to do, and and I will take blame for this. You know, we went through with this rate change in 2012, and we added the CIP charges to pay off debt, and the sewer was set at three, and the water was set at a dollar fifty. I had to come back and say, I, I kind of, my, my figures were off. I need to increase this. So in my mind, I would hate to make a change halfway through 17 and then come back maybe at the end to say, well, maybe we should have done this. I, at least if we have open dialogue with it and you guys understand some of the moving pieces with it, I think. We're I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. I, and, and I, I, I'm with it, too. I, I like the idea of moving forward with, all right, let's go ahead and design this. Well, at least in my discussion with them, let's design it. You know, option A, option B. And option A is, hey, we need to send this water to Timbuktu type of thing. Or B, maybe we just look at a, an upgrade uh, to improve our efficiency if maybe service areas scale down some. Well, one of, in, let me ask, may I ask another question, Tim? Sure. Um, so... Jamie, one of the things that you're looking at, and you're just looking at numbers back and forth. So you're seeing you're seeing the decline in the in the holdback money, right? And so, could you give us a little bit of uh, insight on um, how conservative maybe that is? Um, what what you, you know you I pointed this out a couple times in yeah. your in your in your uh, written statements in the budget. Hey, we need to look at this. Rates are going to have to increase, so forth and so on. What are the what are the situations where that uh, is it is it based on the potential of spending four hundred and fifty or four hundred thousand dollars on a booster statement station? Therefore, we have to increase these rates given the income that we're receiving. You know, basically, we're not increasing the amount of people that we're servicing. Is that how that works, or just give us a little background on the on your position on this? Really, the, con the concern is driven by the, the the trend of the line. So when you look at the fund balance itself. It's a negatively sloped line, so it's approaching zero. If we don't do the booster station, so instead of it crossing zero at 2019 or wherever it was, you shift the line up, maybe it approaches zero in 21. So it's not as critical, but the concern is still the, the line right. itself, that the fund balance is a declining fund balance. And again, the only way you can change that slope is one of, well, one of three ways. You increase your in intake, your revenues, you decrease your spending, or some combination of the two. Um, we try to budget um, 
I'll call it conservatively realistic. I don't pad spending. I don't pad revenues. But then on the other hand, I don't lowball either. So we're trying to kind of balance it to make it more realistic. Uh, so you know that that's the concern. You know the the CIP fees have done a nice job of, of providing the funding for the debt service. So we. We've stopped doing transfers from the operating water and sewer utility fund to the debt service and are purely taking those transfers out of capital. So that's how. Um, in the, in the pr budget proposal that's going to be coming, well, you already have it, but it, we'll be discussing it Monday. Um, Nate's doing some restructuring, so he's eliminating um, a, super, a superintendent position and then is allocating um, the existing superintendent across water and sewer as well as another uh, utility tech. So what that's done is sort of balance out so the fund balance looks a little better. And I, I haven't really looked at the trend line to see where the trend line looks. I think it will help it. But again, it's it's a function of just keeping keeping an eye. And I guess I just don't want it to fall behind the scenes. That, that's why I, I bring it up to say, yeah, like, you know, we need to stay on top of this and not get too far. Because as you guys know, it takes a long time from the point where you say, OK, we need to make a change, whether it's spending or, or, or fees, you know, revenue. By the time you do it, by the time it's implemented and you start receiving it, that's a pretty long lead time. Mr. Fox? <coughs> I'm sorry, Andy. Are you I know. Are you done? Mm -hmm. I know we've, there's been a few discussions about tap fee increases. <clears throat> and that tap fee increase could very well take care of that negative fund balance in the future and set us up for being able to maintain uh, what we have and be able to maintenance what we have in the in the future. Um, and I don't know what our our tap fees are compared to other tap fees. My, un, my indication is they're lower than Southwest Licking. Um, and and maybe if we had a modest increase in our tap fees now, uh, we wouldn't be affecting our residents that are paying now because it would all be new people. Somebody's coming in, building a house. Okay, well, you got $200 more on your tap fee, but that money can be banked for future improvements to our infrastructure um, as we go along. And, and that's, that's what I would, would suggest we do, or at least have that discussion to determine if that's a viable way for us to, to raise money so that in two years when the booster comes up, if we've had a substantial amount of growth, we actually have some funds there towards that booster to offset that cost. Um, and, and I would say now would be better than waiting until uh, the year of and say, oh, crap, now, now we got to come up with $400,000, um, you know, if we started doing that now. So uh, that's what I'd be interested in here. And what are our tap fees? In comparison, is there a reasonable amount? And you don't have to answer it today because I can get that to you. I've got no, no. pretty much done. The last time I looked at that review was 14. Comparing yeah. everyone else, I can update that. I mean, so if there's a reasonable amount that <coughs> that the increase, the tap fee increase could be increased to start putting the way towards the rainy day of 2017 or 18 for what we know potentially could be coming. Um, but we always know we have other infrastructure things that are coming. Right. And so I think now's the time to consider that. Before I bounce to Mr. King, I want to kind of, I want to really quickly, before I lose my train of thought, talk about uh, what Mr. Fox just said there and whether also I would ask Nathan, when you look at that, is there any logic to high pressure versus low pressure when it comes to tap fees? Most of the area of growth that I think Mr. Fox has talked about does involve stuff that's being fed from the booster. Um, so I, I call it, I don't know if that's the right term, high pressure versus low pressure, but I'd, I'd like to see that as well. Okay, Mr. King. No, I was just going to concur with what, um, Mike said, as far as the tap fees, I like that approach because if we have to start making improvements, the, the driving force for that are the developers coming in and I think they should be paying their fair cost to help make those improvements. I would also like to take a look at tap fees and, trying to be slightly more aggressive with paying off some of our outstanding debt, which is going to free us up for the future as well. Um, so I like the idea of putting it, you know, potentially looking at the tap fees, seeing what we can do, 
um, as Jamie mentioned, we can pay for maintenance of the system also out of those tap fees. That way we're not impacting our current users, our current customers with use fees, and we're putting the increased costs on the backs of the developers who want to come in and invest in the city. Uh, J Jamie, uh, can I ask you a quick question? And this is, might be a Jamie B.J. Nathan, round robin. I don't care who answers it. But uh, if we did decide to do that, is there a... Is there a deadline for this committee to do that from a concept of it should be initiated on January 1st for some reason? You're talking about the tap fee or, or paying down the tap, tap fees? Or, or is it just a matter of... Resolution. If you're going to do something, do be resolution because we're in the process now of a lot of the new builds are slowing down and they won't pick back up for the most part until it starts to warm up a little bit. So if we make a decision and do something, I would say, no later than March 1. It's effective if we go that route. Okay. Uh, Mr. Walter. Uh, well, the only thing, the only warning that I throw out there for increased tap fees is if development doesn't come, you don't get, you don't get funded. Absolutely. That's all. Yep. And so we would be Point. potentially um, um, cutting off our nose to bite our face by increasing tap fees. I'm not saying that we're, nobody's suggesting to go dramatic tap fee, fee improvements or increase... But if we increase it such so much that we, do, you know, people don't develop in Patasqua, then we're gonna we're not going to uh, you're not going to see now. Now that may be that we don't have to make grand improvements to the to the system, but I think what we're seeing in the in the line the declining line is maintenance that has to happen regardless of development. Yeah, right. So uh, now that maintenance increases or that those that infrastructure work increases as development happens. Right. But there's already a function in there for tap fees to offset that that cost. Um, well, it's not just the tap fees too, because there's the CIP yeah, fee, CIP fee well, too, right? Going right. in the same place. Right. Well, you know, I, I think our biggest, again, hate to say it this way, but our competition that we are compared to is the Etna Township area, as far as what their tap fees are, because if they're coming out here in this area, they're either going to come into the Patasco area, Etna Township. Or possibly up in the New Albany area, and I and I think as long as our compa our our tap fees are comparable to those areas, I don't. My opinion would be we wouldn't hurt. They wouldn't say, well, you know, they're they're. I'm agreeing. I agree. No, they're they're not going to come out here and say, Southwest Licking is five thousand uh, dollars, Patasco is forty five hundred. We're going to go with Patasco. You know, I, I mean, I don't think it's the, the major decision maker. So as long as I still think we can, and I believe the numbers I've seen, we can still main, maintain a competition with the sewer and water district, even by increasing our tap fees now. And, and we still would be the lowest ones in the, in the general area where our competition is as far as for, for development. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, you know... Uh, what I don't want to see is I don't want to see us keep increasing on our our sewer and water people, our our residents, if if there's a way to help it, and I and I think the tap fees might be a positive way to help it. I mean, uh, I, I I would say that that is abs I mean, I look at it the same way. The first stopgap measure, Andy's points very well taken. If right. we're if we go crazy bumping tap fees, yeah. we may we may lose. We'll have zero, we, we, and right. and and that solves our problem not at all, but uh, you know the the idea that we're keeping the the rates low on the users themselves, um, in the in the end is is an admirable goal and one that we should have I think. Well, and we're, we're set up in a way that it's a simple in and out, you know. The, right, the, the trend line trying to make profit off of. A thousand gallons of water is not really our business model, so I think we can keep that affordable and healthy if there's a way that we can adjust. And even if it is, and not not to say that we're leaving money on the table, but maybe regarding in town, out of town, we're comparable to the district, and maybe even some cases higher in some of the out of town areas. Some, but if our in town was comparable, I think it would provide what I would call healthy competition. Then that way, at least there's a balance. It, maybe that could be something that. Across the board, because our numbers are only going to be about a thousand gallons. Mm -hmm. Ours, some, some, some. Oh. some. <clears throat> 
Okay. Um, my action item for that is you you guys will get back back to the utility committee with uh, some of the some of the information that we just discussed. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is other. I don't know if anybody has anything specific they'd like to bring up. Well, you yeah, we have the What'd assessment of tap fees. And I'll oh, I'm sorry. Assessment oh, of tap okay. fees for nonprofits. That's uh, okay. Um, this is an item that I wanted to bring up. When Nate and I have been looking at our fee schedule, and we do have some high tap fees when you start looking at, you know, whether it's a church or a school or a public facility, um, what I would deem nonprofits for the most part, um, you know, they're going to have to come in and do fire suppression. They're going to have their domestic water supply, and those fees can add up quickly, a couple hundreds of thousands of dollars pretty quickly. Um, so one of the ideas that was thrown out is potentially um, setting some criteria for nonprofits. Maybe it's a threshold of a dollar amount if, or a size of a tap or whatever, um, that they would have the ability to have that assessed on their property tax bill. It's not a waiver. It's not a reduction of the fees. It's just a different way of us collecting it. Um, it would be collected over time. It wouldn't want be one lump sum payment to us. But when you start looking at these and, you know, take a church, for example, that if they've got to do fire suppression, which we hope they never have to use, and they, you have to do domestic, which is pretty low use, they're going to have to pay several hundred thousands of dollars to tap onto our line for something they may, you know, the fire suppression they may never use, the domestic they may be very low use. And, you know, with their revenue coming in and their ability to pay those, that's a big hit to some of those budgets. So um, I like the idea of um, providing the opportunity. I think it'll be rare when it happens. Um, I think it'll be very rare, but it can certainly be the difference maker for a project um, moving forward for a nonprofit. Mr. Fox. And that, when that gets, somebody correct me on this if I'm wrong, when that put, gets put on assessment, there's a 7%. Interest charge. I've not heard back from the county yet. As for, mm -hmm. First off, whether they can accommodate this, um, but if they can, I would get all the details. We currently have only one special assessment, and that's in the Oaks uh, when they extend the sanitary sewer line. Those residents all have the opportunity to either pay it in full or be assessed over a period of time. So, Who gets that percentage is my question. I'm assuming the county keeps yeah. it. Service fee charge. Really? Because I would think that if it was our funds that we're basically that holding. putting out. Yeah, or not holding. But. I mean, we're providing those funds to do the project, mm -hmm. and then they're just collecting it. I would certainly think that uh, that, that that would be our involvement somewhere. I mean, we're. We may be getting it. I don't, okay. I, I if you could find yeah, out, we'll confirm I'd, that. I'd like to know that. Yeah. yeah. And then it I, started right as I was as just starting here, okay. and I just got the. Here's the schedule of all the payments, so it may include that interest calculation in there as well. Okay. Then, then I have another question uh, similar to that, about that. Um, if a entity comes in here, a nonprofit, not nonprofit, I don't care what it is, and they have to put a bigger line in, does the water rate change? The usage rate? Yes. No. I was informed today time. that... Yeah. I was informed today that the, I'll say it, Pataskala Bank pays $85 down here and down here where they have the sewer and water district, same place. They have sewer and water down here in, in Summit. They have sewer and water over here. $80, $120 for the same usage, less water, 85 I have no idea why that both would be. Both in the same district? Both in the same district. And the rationale is? That they have a bigger tap. Who, who, is this our customer? No, no, no. no. I was going to say no. This no, is I mean water usage is water usage, regardless of how big the. And pipes, I was just curious if we do that. No, no. That's okay. what the old system was was tiered based on usage, and that was a nightmare management standpoint and personal budgets. But I mean, they're not using it. They actually use less water down here than they, they do there. More? And they get charged 120 that's, here. That's okay. ridiculous. It's almost but. like they're being. I'll look into it myself. Yeah, that doesn't. Chance. That makes but no sense. I, I just know, wondered if we did that. No. Have a full team here too. No, I think it is. You know, regardless if it's flowing through a three quarter inch, six inch, you're going to be using the same amount of water. And there's no difference, but there is there it appears. Yeah. All right, I'll look it's based that. on usage. Um, on this subject, the the first thing I have to say is um, I think I'm in. I am in favor of at least having us uh, look look at doing something like this. Because those people pay that fee essentially when they get their permits. Is that right? 
So that may keep, for lack of a, a fire department or a church or I don't know what other nonprofit you want to say, a school, it may keep them from putting on that extra piece of a sanctuary or a gym or a bay. Right. And and so, you know, in, in an effort to, to make that better, I don't think that there's a problem with that. My One of the questions that, that kind of sits in my brain is, do we want to do it? Do we want to make it a blanket thing? Like, if you're a nonprofit, you, can, you have this option. Or do we want to make it, you have the option, but council approves it? And, and so that would be my next question as to how you guys envision, envision the oversight for that. First, let me correct something, I think. Okay. Uh, I think your example's bad because the fire district doesn't pay, in, pay on uh, taxes and the school district doesn't pay property taxes. So I don't think they'd be paying any assessment. Okay, I'll say church. So Or church. There well, are some no, taxes that, that yeah. all entities property pay. Taxes. Okay. There are, there are some little charges that come through. Like even on okay. our temp properties, we do get a bill for okay. small dollars. Okay. All right. So they, they would have the ability to do that then. Mm -hmm. All of those entities that were very, okay, good. Okay. Andy. <clears throat> so uh, let me just make sure I'm understanding this. For, so the tap fee wouldn't be changed. It just to be able to be assessed. Correct. That's all. That's all. And no reductions, no waivers. It would just be assessed. And if there is under a development, under a potential development area, uh, they have to, because sometimes they also get assessments for improving the infrastructure across their property. Mm -hmm. For instance, if they have to extend sanitary or extend water, or water has to be extended to them, they can get assessed for that also. So are you saying that this would be just yet another assessment for them? Correct. Okay. When BJ and I discussed this, I was can I ask one more thing? Just one more thing. You know, schools. You know, usually they've got they've got levies, they've got state money, they've got matching funds coming in, that type of thing. Is this not potentially hurting them because they're not going to be able to pay for that over thirty? You know, they're not going to tell the state, you know, hey, by the way, break out a million dollars and break it out over thirty years to pay me because I got an assessment. I think that would be a dis. You know, it will it hurt them potentially, but I think that's a decision. You know, they how they're going to do it. They don't have to assess it. It's an option that's available for them. If they come in and say, you know, and let's use a church or fire or firehouse or something, and they come in and say, wow, you know, we want to do this, but, you know, the along with fire suppression and um, our domestic, we're going to have to pay $400,000. We can't afford to do that. And, um, you know, it's going to change our project. We can't do the project. So, you know, I think from, you know, if a school said, well, yeah, you know, I think that's a business decision for them to make. Okay. Good enough. One of the things that BJ and I discussed this, that kind of gets back, kind of it touches on what you bring up. Um, I would not be necessarily comfortable extending it much beyond like five years. Right. Okay. So Good. It's an it would be a shorter assessment. Because you're, you're, it, it, yeah. Okay. The other option that you guys always have, I mean, I reach out to a number of colleagues who, uh, our finance directors with utilities in their operations, and, and nobody's done this that, that they're aware of. So it's kind of new ground, which is why I've asked the county auditor's office to confirm that, hey, we can do this. One one of them responded, why wouldn't they just roll that into their construction funding? So I mean, I, that, right. that, that would be the question I guess I would also ask. That's what I was kind of going with. Certainly could. You get your state funding okay. or you get your construction funding for a church, and they're already getting rates that are pretty low. So. Seven and a half percent is not a good rate. But for those, who, but for those who, who don't have that option, perhaps this might you know, okay. give them an alternative. Yeah, I think it would be a very rare, uh, rarely used process, but I think it would be one that certainly if you find somebody who's in the position would be um, a good good process for them to be able to take advantage of. BJ, what do you think about council making the decision on a case-by-case -case basis? Um, I, I believe, well, I, I know anytime there's an assessment made, it usually comes in front of council anyways for action. Okay, so that kind of is self-answering? Yes. Okay. Um, if, if the action item for this is um, the committee is, again, not saying no, um, we'll certainly present the criteria um, that we think is appropriate for this and to the committee and see if um, you want to recommend it on the council. Do you need a recommendation now, or does it need to be – is it – Something that can. I think you'll recommend the actual process to council. So, 
but we'll there. have to wait till we see the process. Right. Okay. Then I'll put that also as a, something that to be resolved uh, at the National Utility Committee meeting. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. Um, Mr. Cooey. On that, I would recommend that however we write this up, let's say um, A through C, there's certain criteria they have to be mm -hmm. met. Okay. The city administrator under our ordinance is, is permitted to negotiate tax fees. But I think what's unique with this, if you're talking nonprofit, you do it for one where does it stop type of thing so I would write it up in a way that we bring it before them every mm -hmm. time for final approval. oh I agree totally and and I think that you know I don't see this as a negotiation of tap fees I can see this as hey they're paying the tap fees it's just different so it certainly would like we do other assessments that would come in front of council for action that way it's all mm -hmm. yep and of course all with the caveat that mr. Nicholson is going to be letting us know if Correct. They say that it's even possible. And that'll be part of that whole criteria that we provide. Okay. And it will ultimately come to council for a decision. Yes. yes. All right. Um, that moves us on uh, to the item I prematurely attended to earlier, which is other business. Number seven. Does anybody have any other business for the utility committee? I would like to. One, one thing that I want to do for, is this, are we going to have the same committee next year or will it change? We don't I have know. no idea. We don't, we don't know. So what I want to do, you know, we've talked about a lot of things Probably about same. rates and, and budget and some of these projects that are, well, they're in the budget to be considered. What I would like to do is work with this group and do something similar to RAMP, and I'd like to call it SWAMP, <laughs> Sewer and Water Asset Management Plan, because <laughs> part of it, we have to do some of this free EA stuff that's coming up, but also I would like to be able to do the same thing and kind of throw all these projects up on, on a map. So we, you guys can we see. call it product? Well, we could call it product. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. It is kind of that. But just so <laughs> if I'm ever dead and gone, at least, you know, including our budget sheets, that there's discussion to say, all right, uh, even if we rank it, this color we want to address in 5 to 10. This color should be addressed in... That way we have some document moving into the future. So we don't have to come up every two years. Well, it's healthy, but at least we have a mind on, you know, kind it's of... It's like a comprehensive plan. Correct. Yeah, yeah there you go. Because we, we've never really done that, and the city is encouraged to do that. Why don't we do it with the utilities? And uh, maybe if I was smarter, I'd already have it done by now, but it's one of those things that if we establish plans, that way it's there, that it's kind of been vetted out and say... Hey, if we've got the cash, maybe some of it, if we have cash, here's cash projects that we do X, Y, Z. And here's ones that we would be willing to take on debt under certain circumstances. That way we know going forward. Mm -hmm. So then it's just not necessarily always me, not that I mind, but saying, hey, let's do this one, this one, and this one. I would like more, uh, not, I don't know, participation, but involvement from this standpoint, if we have to reinvest, where are our target areas? Make sure that we're in agreement in target areas, whether it's Old Town or whatever. So then, one, if four years from now it's a total different group in council, there's still this document that outlasts us to say, hey, we can keep building with this and going into the. It's a great. So hopefully, you guys maybe will be around again. That way, we can bust that out. Be a little help. I think it's a great idea. PJ? The only thing, can you um, comment the what's in your report about the two employees and what they oh, achieved. Yeah. Um, <laughs> were, were any of you, um, I remember Dan Hayes was here. I want to say a couple years ago, I don't know if maybe Mike and Tim were here, so I could hear that. We had to come before council and to basically waive, uh, get your permission to take off the books outstanding funds that were due to us. Do you recall that? Because people would leave town. We don't yes. track Social Security. So people mm -hmm. leave town, we never got paid. So we call that our unpaid finals. People that skip town, whether renters, owners, whatever. And we had to bring, I want to say, it was like $9,000 Yep. over a course of, it was like maybe eight years, or I think. Mm -hmm. So that, um, first of all, was a little embarrassing. But what has transpired between Stephanie and Steve Crane, our billing clerk, for the first time ever, our unpaid uh, final 
uh, list has a zero balance. So that's a testament to his effort. And if we come in the office some days, you hear how he calls the customers and says, hey, you know, kind of working out He's time frames. Too. Hey, if you get here and get this, we're going to go, you know, it'll be done. And it's not like bullying, like, if you don't get in here and pay it, we're going to shut you up. No, he okay. does a great job. Yeah, so I think that's a testament to the, the billing office that that's something that, in my mind, should be a goal all the time, right? So now we don't have to come back a couple years from now and say, hey, will you forgive this money that for some reason we didn't get or figure out? So that's outstanding. He's, Steve's been here for this. is He just passed his second year mark. So this has been an ongoing project building him up. And uh, I was tickled. It'll be in, it's in the council report. And then uh, Ryan Brown, he recently passed his Wastewater 3 certification. So that allows us to focus everybody under him as a single superintendent. And uh, he's going to work with me to take over the operator of record duties at the uh, wastewater plant because that requires a class three operator. So um, Ryan is second to none. So Previously, you were the uh, operator of record? Yeah, well, uh, in our transition from the, the last employee that served there. So I'm serving there now, and I'm just trying to get Ryan uh, kind of up to speed on how we, we do run the plant based on our SMPs. And now that he's official, I can turn over the reins to him for uh, signing of the paperwork and things like that. So That's awesome. Kudos, kudos to is. both of them. Yeah, yeah kudos can, to both of them, certainly. Can I ask a question, a just operating question? How often do we certify funds to the county for collection on taxes? Um, usually, it might only be twice a year. Can't, there's yeah, sometimes it's been quite a while. Since it's yeah, been a while since we've and had it's one. only. I, well, I'm not going to say the name, but there's always one that we have to deal with, and it's one of the folks that are assessed, and they just never pay their bill. So really, I only recall that one, and if we do it, it's it's once, maybe twice a year. Okay. So it's not it's something curious. that we make a habit of. It's certainly a lot. Any other questions? Kudos, I mean, if, I guess if officially, kudos to those two. Yeah, right. To, to Steve and Ryan, because that's right. two, two impressive uh, milestones there for each of them. So, uh, any other questions? Motion to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded. Can I have the roll? Taken. Yes. Walter. Yes. Fox. Yes. We stand adjourned at 112. Thanks, PJ and Nathan, can I talk to you for a couple